Hi, this is Ghost, and I'm playing The Last Door, Collector's Edition. Before I start, I gotta sync Bird, Twitter Bird, Facebook F. All right, and let's uh, let's go to episode two. Here's episode two, I guess. The adventure continues in episode two. Oh, well. Well, I, I, oh. <laughs> oh, sorry. Previously on The Last Door. Here we go. Jeremiah Devitt receives a mysterious letter from his childhood friend, Anthony Beechworth. He travels to his friend's manor in Sussex, where he learns of Anthony's descent into madness and the death of his wife, Anna Beechworth. Devitt, or Devitt? I don't know. Devitt faces the perils of the house and finally finds the dead body of his friend who committed suicide. Anthony's final letter warns Devitt of an unknown danger and asks him to remember his past by going back to the boarding school they both attended years back. I don't like I don't like where this is going. I don't want to go to a boarding school that's probably abandoned and full of zombies. Okay, the music ended abruptly there. <laughs> Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. I'm a priest now? Oh no, am I gonna die? Oh no. Oh no, I'm gonna die a horrible death, aren't I? Why does that Jesus look like a real person on the cross? That's kind of creepy. Also, does this priest have enough crosses? I mean, like, holy frick. Oh, there are so many crosses here. Okay. That's his bed. He just sleeps in this room. I don't know. I... I may be a person of somewhat religious faith, but, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think I want to be, I don't think I'd want to sleep in a room filled with a bunch of crosses and a, and a freaking Jesus hanging on the cross right above my bed. I don't, I don't think, uh, I'd like that. That's kind of creepy, but okay, you do you. Uh, th thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Okay. What are you doing? Oh no, I don't like where this is going. Give us each day our daily bread. Oh, okay. Wait, you're getting naked? What? <laughs> I don't know about this. Okay. Forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive our debtors. Okay, you're gonna pray? That's... Okay, that's not praying. And lead us not into temptation. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know about this. I don't, I'm not sure about this. But deliver us from evil. Okay, amen. Woo. Okay. I'm not sure about all that, but okay. <laughs> Good job, Carlos, on the music. Once again, it's still kind of loud, but. I mean, I like it. It's very nice. It's just hard for me to edit. Because I gotta make sure the balance is right. Are we gonna see a dead priest? Or a zombie priest? I'm not sure I can handle that. <laughs> There's Dino again, and Slip! Oh, I missed Slip. That's a cool name. Or Silp. Not Slip. That's Silp. That's even cooler. <laughs> Intriguing music. <laughs> now tell me, where are you? What do you see? I see nothing. I see darkness. Okay, I see a tree now. Oh, I forgot. I have to click. I was trying to move the, the arrow keys to move. Are we back to being me, or are we still the priest? I don't know, it's too dark. I don't like uh, what I'm hearing. Nope, don't like it. But I'm gonna keep going towards it. I think I'm, at least I think I'm going towards it. Oh no, who is it? Is it Anthony? Answer me. Oh, I'm supposed to move. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> okay. Okay, Anthony's 
freaking possessed. <laughs> I don't. Okay. Uh, am I? Am I the priest? Now there's babies. What is she doing? Get close to her. Get close to Anna. So that's Anna and her baby. Yeah. What happened to this baby? That's what I want to know. Come here. So gonna. Yep. Oh, that's what I thought would happen. Just freaking lightning hits her and she's dead. <laughs> okay, let's just keep going. Let's just keep going. What's next? Don't tell. Don't let it be the cat. Don't let the cat get hit by thunder. I I can't ha handle that. When I count to three, you'll wake up. Is this guy hypnotizing me? Where am I? One. Two. <laughs> Three! Now wake up! Wake up! Okay, frick. Jesus. Oh, it's a therapist. Okay. Great. You can rest now, Mr. Devitt. That'll be enough for today. Are these sessions really necessary? Yeah, are they? I, I was... Wasn't I supposed to go to a boarding school? <laughs> what, <laughs> what happened in between the time that I saw Anthony's death and, and now? What... I am confident that this is the best course of treatment for your symptoms. Now, did you ever see him again? I saw it. What did you see? Can you describe it? Well, I saw a guy hanging in a tree, then I saw his wife holding a baby, Then, but they both, like, died to thunder. That's what I saw. I struggled to find adequate words. It looked like an eye. Well, yeah, it did look like an eye. <laughs> there was an eye at the end. It was like an eye, perfectly rounded and dark, deep and empty, accompanied by the most horrifying pain-filled screams I've ever heard. It sounded more like some kind of beast that was doing a mating call, but sure, I mean, sure, scream. <laughs> Inside a complete darkness, an evil dwells deep below, a forgotten fear for human reasoning, but undoubtedly still rests deep down inside our being. In my case, that fear has already awoken. I wonder what they're talking about. I can understand what you are disturbed, Mr. Devitt. With your permission, I would like to consult on your case with a colleague of mine, a man I've known for many years who is, I think, his knowledge and experience would be very helpful in enabling us to understand your condition. If you think it would help, Doctor, I leave it in your hands. The agony grows increasingly unbearable, and if you believe this man can help, then I welcome his aid. Thank you, Doctor. So, after I saw Anthony's... Anthony, I guess... Uh... I guess... My mind was messed up from seeing, you know, the dead bodies and all the blood and stuff. I mean, I didn't act like I was losing my mind at the moment. <laughs> I acted pretty calm. I acted like I didn't know what was going on at all. <laughs> but... After that, um, I guess it all sunk in and he became a little uh, crazy. And he needed therapy. But he never went to the boarding school? Like, come on, man. Anthony told you to go to the boarding school. I would have went straight there, like Scooby-Doo. No, I'm kidding. I would have went home. <laughs> I would have went home. And the second I walked into that creepy mansion, I would have been like, Nope, I'm getting bad vibes. Going to leave now. I see that grandfather clock. It looks like a human. I'm just going to go home, pet my cat, go to sleep, and not think about any of this anymore. <laughs> Anthony, my friend, what really happened to you? How could you have let your wife Anna, or Anna, die so awfully? These doubts consume my soul. I hardly remember the time we spent together as schoolmates. Well, it seems like a lot of time has passed since then. Have you guys even kept being friends past that time? Because it doesn't seem like you have. Considering... You uh, don't really talk about him... Presently, as if you knew him... Well... You act like you know him from your childhood, but not as an adult. I don't know what I'm talking about. I confess that beyond your enduring friendship, I can recall little of those years. Were your words a result of an increasing loss of sanity? 
In your letter, you wrote that someone awaits me. A warning to ward me from a, gr a genuine danger or merely the ra ravenings... Ra ravings! Sorry. Of a brilliant mind addled by his by insanity. Uh, I'm pretty sure that Cthulhu's gonna come, man. Something stirs uneasily within my heart. I will not rest easily again until I go back to that boarding school and find out what secrets may lay within. May lie within. <laughs> Dots. Farewell, Mr. and Mrs. Beechworth. Rest now in peace. Alright, let's go to the boarding school. Or we can, you know, sit around and be sad still. That's cool, too. Alright, next day, let's go to the boarding school! <laughs> Episode 2. Memories. Oh no, cicadas are here. I don't like cicadas. Seriously, they creep me out. I don't like them. What's this? The Angel Gabriel. The school's emblem. I remember it being very pristine, but it looks neglected and dirty now. Would they really let a boarding school get this... filthy? Even if it's abandoned? I don't know. This is, uh... In old times, man. Who knows? A stone eagle lies on the floor. It appears to have broken off of the fountain. Well, maybe you should pick it up and put it back on, then. Okay, maybe not. I'll just carry it in my pocket for good luck, even though it still looks like it's on the floor. But maybe I'm just crazy, and that's a rock. And that wasn't even the eagle. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna go around here and look at this. Win yeah, I'm gonna... Oh, I thought I was gonna climb in the window. Oh, is there a person out here digging? Digging a hole? Hey, man, what are you doing out here? Why are you digging? Oh, there's a graveyard in this school. What? Maybe they turned the boarding school into a graveyard. Still kind of weird. Good evening. I hope you are right, and this turns out to be indeed a good evening. My name's Devitt. I'm going to ignore that your, your pessimism. I did not know there was a graveyard here. My pleasure, Mr. Devitt. I am Frank Baldwin. Do not ask me why, but Mons uh, Monsignor... Monsignor... On whatever, specifically ordered me to bury the corpses here. Why? Did he order to bury corpses here? Why? I do not understand. What is there to understand, Mr. Devitt? God has forsaken this place. Ah, don't you know? Here, we take care of patients. What? <laughs> is this a mental ward now? What? An asylum? I I'm an old... Alums, I u I used to attend the school. Exactly what that just says. That said, it has been a long time since this is not a boarding school anymore. The building is now n used as a nursing home run by nuns. A former student. Uh, what? If it's still, if it's not abandoned, why is the statue of Gabriel all dirty and nasty? And why are these trees all dead looking? Come on, man, take pride in your place. This is just sad. <laughs> a former student, eh? I never heard anybody in the village speak fondly of the school. They say it, is, it closed overnight, though nobody knows why. Not a lot was known about it. Excuse the interruption, Mr. Baldwin. I'll leave you with your work. Have a nice evening, Alums Devitt. Alumnus. Alumnus. How do you pronounce that? Alumnus. Alumnus. Student, schoolgirl, schoolboy, pupil, undergraduate. So basically, student. Student. Okay. Using a lot of old terms that I don't know because I'm young and stupid. <laughs> Let's go through this door. Okay. Okay, I didn't think we'd go through that door. But, you know, it was worth a shot. It was worth a shot. Let's go through the front door, actually. I've wasted enough time walking around this place. I want to go inside. Oh. Well, this isn't too bad. This is pretty nice and cheerful. I'm gonna go talk to to the nun here. Pardon, excuse me, sister. Ooh, why do you have dark red text? I don't like that. Good evening, sister. Good evening. I'm Mother Elizabeth. What brings you here, Mr. 
Devitt. I'm a former student of this boarding school. As you can see, Mr. Devitt, this stopped being an academic in institution a long time ago and is now exclusively dedicated to prayer and the well-being of the patients under our care. I see. Even so, may I please speak to... Mr. Devitt, I'm afraid that we are too busy to start wasting time talking about past issues. In addition, there is little to say. We sisters arrived after the boarding school had closed down. Everybody but Monsignor, of course. Monsignor? Monsignor? I don't know how to pronounce his name. <laughs> exactly. But you didn't answer my question. Why have you come to this place, Mr. Devitt? Well, I was about to tell you before you rudely interrupted me, sister. <laughs> Sorry, that's rude. You should never speak to a nun like that. Uh, I'd be. It'd be good for me to appreciate the passage of time. This place will help me remember. I don't. I don't know. The first one. I guess that would be a good idea to visit this place again and perceive the passage of time. Perceive the passage of time. What are you talking about? This place will help me remember my past. If you have memory problems. <laughs> if you have memory problems. <laughs> Are you speaking to me? If you have memory problems, I would recommend you to visit a doctor immediately and don't waste your time here. To be honest, I prefer not to talk about it. I couldn't tell you why this place is so important for me, but, but it is a lot. Well, I appreciate your honesty, Mr. Devitt. After all your lying, I'll allow you to stay around here. I hope I won't regret my decision. Don't worry, Mother. Thank you. Thought she was sister. Okay. Oh, well. <laughs> Wait, I left! Oh, no, I didn't. I, I was just taking off my coat. Okay. I thought I was gonna leave. <laughs> like, after she allows me to come inside, I just leave her. <laughs> Ooh! Y'all are very sick. I shouldn't be in here. I'm gonna go in here anyway. I'm gonna look at your stuff. Among the bag... baggages, I can see a packet of letters bound by twine. Can I steal those? I'd ask you not to touch my belongings, please. You're not aware who you are talking to. Sorry. Can I talk to you then? Doctor. No, I'm sorry, I'm not a doctor. Pay him no mind. He has been delirious for some days. I'm Miss Mary Vinge. And this is my brother, Matthew. Juliet. <coughs> Why have you left me here? Why don't you answer my <coughs> letters? My letters. You see, the poor man is still obsessed with his fiance. He won't accept that she left him months ago. My poor Matthew. I'm very sorry, Miss Vinge. Or Vinge. I hope he recovers. Thank you. Okay. Can I steal your stuff now? <laughs> I would ask you not to touch my Julian. I, there was Julian and. Stuff was- it, it was weird. Okay, he's saying Juliet. Okay. I'm surprised your name's not Romeo. Where are you? She's- she left you, man. I'm sorry. I'm gonna look at this now. A magazine entitled Weird Tales. Oh, sounds like fun. Let's read it. Oh, okay, fine. <laughs> oh, hello. Are you alright, madam? There was a rhythmic sound, like a breathing. What do you mean? It was last night. I felt an increasing pressure on my temples. Something dry and rough like tree bark brushed against my leg. And I saw something on the wall like a... I am sure it was just a nightmare, madam. It wasn't a nightmare. Something creepy's gonna go on here, and you know it. Because this is like a, a psychological horror game, right? That's what it was called? Yeah, so something horrible's gonna happen here. Let's talk to this person. He is a quite pale young boy. He's asleep. Okay. Oh, hello. Another sister. Please help. Please! Somebody pity! I am sorry. You cannot be here. Is there some way I can help? Don't worry about it, sir. The Lord looks after each and every one of our patients. He'll provide you with all the help you need. If you wish, you can pray there next to the... Don't you think it is she is beautiful? <laughs> I didn't... <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure some words were hidden below there, but okay. Don't you think she is beautiful? The Virgin listens to those in need. I don't see her. Oh, there? That one? A gloomy statue of the Virgin Mary makes this place even more mournful, if that is possible. Oh, don't be so pessimistic. It looks fine. I like the decor. It's very nice. 
Uh, though maybe you should get you guys should uh, you know get medicine. Okay, uh, just a suggestion. I'm gonna look at this now. <laughs> a picture of the Virgin Mary gazing at you, supposedly to portray the sympathy and compassion for you. Then again, this is like, what, what time is this? The 1800s. How, how good was their medicine back then? Probably not as good as it was today. So maybe this is all they can do. However, she seems to look more pained and sorrowful here. Okay, well, I mean... This is a place where people are probably gonna die. I'm gonna leave now. <laughs> no wonder she looks sad. I'm gonna leave. Okay, unlock the door. Oh. Cool. Oh. Well, that's kind of where I thought it would go. But still, I was hoping for somewhere cool. I'm gonna go in here now. And look at your stuff. All these bookshelves. I remember we used to keep here some textbooks. Now there's a music box. I'll take the music box. Nice. I get to listen to more awful music. More crows, right? <laughs> Dear brother, I have received your letter and I'll try to write you more frequently. I hope you are studying a lot and you feel comfortable there. We miss you a lot. When are you coming back? Father is in bed with fever and I do not feel very well, but I am on medication. Well, at least you're on medication. Today is my birthday, and I'm feeling blue. It is a quiet and boring Sunday at my at the village. Mum is going to cook a lemon cake, like those grandma used to make. I wish we could eat it together. Right back soon. I am looking forward to knowing how you are doing, what you are learning, how is Scotland, and so on. A big hug. I think about you a lot, your dear sister. You're not going to put your name, dear sister? Okay. I, I'm guessing that was a letter from when this was a, a school. So who knows if that guy ever got the letter. And if he ever wrote back. January 15th, 1876. Okay, so this is the 1800s. But we're getting close to the 1900s, so you would think medicine would be decent at this point. Father Ernest seemed unusually troubled today. Several times he paused abruptly in the middle of the lecture for no reason, even during his favorite class, theology. Well, he's probably going through some tough times. Father Ernest is... Probably, uh... Sick. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe somebody died in the family. He doesn't want to talk about it. January 18th, 1876. Today, Father Ernest was very irritable. Collins made a comment and was expelled from class for it, and even Devitt was admo admonished just for re reading a philosophy book. <gasps> I was admonished for reading a philosophy book? Or was that a different Devitt? I hope Father Ernest doesn't turn his ire towards me. My father... The frick was that? My father will be disappointed if I fail to get good marks. Okay. January 21st, 1876. It was very disconcerting to see Father Ernest entering class so pale and sweaty. In the middle of his lecture, he stumbled, dazed, and had to sit. So he was sick. January 22nd, 1876. Father Eugene taught our theology class today, even though he doesn't know the subject matter as well as Father Ernest. When we asked him what happened to Father Ernest, Father Eugene told us that he had taken ill. What worries me is that now Father Eugene is also starting to look unwell. Oh no, he caught it! It's contagious! It's the plague! February 20th, 1876. It has been a month since we last saw Father Ernest. We are told that he is still sick, but if he is so ill, then why hasn't a physician come to treat him? My studies are flagging, but I have taken it upon myself to read on my own. I hope this helps, as I must succeed in spite of the problems happening around us. February 23rd, 1876. It was announced this morning that the school is, so is to close. None of us knows why, and we cannot get a straight answer from the faculty. They each dodge the question, and I am starting to think they may not know the answer themselves. Their anxiety is palpable, though they try to hide it behind a calm face. But what about Father Ernest? I hear he is alone. I hear he alone is to remain after we vacate the premises. Why isn't he sick? Why isn't he at a hospital? There is a picture in the diary. Oh, what a nice little class... Uh... Picture. Class photo. Why, one kid is scratched out, though, and that's kind of rude. It is a, pho a photograph of my graduating class. I see myself, Father Ernest, and Anthony. I do not remember the names of the others. I don't see anyone. <laughs> I can't tell who is who in this picture. Is that an owl? What the heck is that sound? I, I saw the closed captioning come up, but I didn't get to read it. One face has been completely scratched out. Yeah, I see that. 
Who's that poor soul? 